Hi, I'm Chad Shear. I'm founder of Informative Prior. We do consulting and uh, software development with a focus on open source statistical modeling in Julia. And I'm going to talk about composable Bayesian modeling with SOS.jl. Okay, so let's start with just talking about what SOS actually is. So SOS is a probabilistic programming language. Um, there are a few other probabilistic programming languages in Julia. It's a great environment for developing them, and I hope you'll check out their talks um, at, uh, at JuliaCon. SOS in particular, a model in SOS is a DAG, a directed acyclic graph. Um, so you have a collection of nodes, and any one of these nodes represents some conditional distribution. And in SOS, the nodes can be arbitrarily complex. So for example, um, a node might be a normal distribution, but it could also be a Gaussian process, or as we're going to see today, um, a, a Markov chain. Um, SOS is different in another way, which is that every node is stored as an expression. So um, when you do inference in SOS, the code for the inference primitives, for example, um, for example, the code that generates uh, random values or evaluates a log density, that code is generated on demand. So let's look at an example of Markov chains. So a Markov chain in measuretheory.jl, we would write this as, let's say, MC is our Markov chain. So we use the chain combinator. And for this, we need to specify an initial distribution. So the Markov chain is an infinite sequence of values. And here, the first value in that sequence will be drawn from a standard normal. The second part we need in a Markov chain is a function from a value to another distribution. So this says, first we're going to sample a normal and then call that x. And then based on that x, our next distribution is going to be normal x standard deviation of 1. Call that x and continue. So we get this infinite sequence of values. So if we draw a sample from this, um, let's say r equals rand of mc. Again, this is an infinite sequence. So we can't look at all of the values, but we can take, for example, the first five as we do here. And if we collect the first five, we just get a vector of these five values. And this is what um, uh, lots of uh, different calls to RAND would look like if we look at the first 100 elements. OK, so this is just in measure theory so far. So let's actually put this into sauce. So to put this into sauce, we would say, uh, let's call it M for a model. M equals at model begin. And we have our Markov chain. MC is going to be drawn from a Markov chain. Now, rather than have everything in one single um, function, or one single model, we can actually break this up into pieces. So in SOS, any distribution or any measure can be expressed as itself a SOS model. So what was this normal 0, 1 can now be MC init, where MC init is itself another SOS model. So this simple example, we can just say, um, let's just draw a normal 0, 1, and then return that value. We can also do this with the step. So instead of saying x goes to a normal x1, we could take this a step further and also factor out the Markov transition. So here we have mc step is a model that takes a state, and in the body of the transition, we look at the x value at that state, call that a new x, and then return x equals x. This is the way things are currently set up. Um, we would like to um, refactor things a little bit at some point so to make this more flexible. But currently, what we recommend is um, actually having the named tuple as a return value. So this is looking good, but we still don't have any parameters. So if we fit observations, um, there's, there's nothing for us to infer. So let's add some parameters. So we can add a drift term that's added to the value each time we take the, the normal for the transition kernel, and also a standard deviation. And everything else will stay the same in the transition kernel step. 
in the model itself, we also need to add uh, priors for these parameters. And then we will um, pass for the MC step, we will now pass in the parameters as well as the state. Okay, and um, when we take a random value, um, if we say R equals rand of M, and then we take the first five and collect those, now we will get this uh, vector of uh, named tuples. So now let's take a look at what this would actually look like for inference. So say we have some observations that come from drawing a random sample from the model um, and just taking the first 10 elements and collecting those into a vector. Call that OBS for OBS, observations. Then we can look at the posterior. In this case, um, the posterior is the model conditional on the named tuple where the, the markup chain is equal to the observations that we've observed. And then we can, for example, using dynamic HMC, um, we can say using sample chains dynamic HMC, this loads the sample chains package, the sample chains dynamic HMC package, and of course also the dynamic HMC package itself. Uh, then we can call sample on the posterior using dynamic HMC, and the thing we get out is four chains uh, that, um, that have this uh, representation. So this is actually a collection of four vectors, each with a thousand elements. Okay, so our sigma is uh, one with some margin of error, and our delta mu is 1.46 with some margin of error. Finally, we can also use this for hidden Markov chains. So um, here's an example where the initialization and the uh, Markov kernel um, are the same as previously, but now in addition to our Markov chain, we have a Y value that says for each value in the Markov chain, we're going to call that S and we're going to draw a Poisson with, the, with E to that value. And then we can return Y as the final result. So let's see what this looks like. If we, for example, say, um, let's set sigma e is equal to one and delta mu is 0.5, then we can predict the model um, on those values. And the thing that we get out will be, well, the, the y is returned, so that's what we'll get as our result. So in this case, if we take the first 10 values and collect those into a vector, we get something like this. So thanks very much for watching. Um, if you uh, would like to learn more, I hope you'll check out sauce.jl. Um, also, our, uh, our, our main webpage is informativeprior.com. Thank you.